Welcome back to Civil Wars, I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture asks a simple question with a not-so-simple answer. What is a civil war? Well, earlier I said that you could think of a civil war as an armed conflict between two or more parties within a state. Yet, in practice, you have civil wars having this I-know-it-when-I-see-it sort of flavor, where if you point to a particular conflict, I can say, yes, that's a civil war, or no, it's not. But if you ask me to write down a list of necessary and sufficient conditions for a conflict to be counted as a civil war, it's not so easy. And actually, you see scholars, social scientists, people who are experts in civil wars coding data sets on every civil war that occurred over a particular time period, you'll actually see them debate on the specifics. The good news, though, is that by and large, there's agreement, and there's agreement because there tend to be common measures of what makes a civil war a civil war. And those five common measures that you see most frequently are there being organization on both sides, the involvement of a non-state actor, the involvement of a government, there being political goals in the fight, and for the fight to be sufficiently deadly. And so what I want to do here is go over why you see those common measures. I think they're intuitive why you want to have these sorts of measures in what you call something a civil war or you don't call it a civil war. But it is worth pointing out what these things do and what they don't do in terms of whether civil wars count as civil wars or not. So we need to have organization. The reason is that we're not interested in massacres. Massacres are tragic, don't get me wrong. This is an example here on the right. That's the Nazi Holocaust going on. We don't want to include these because you don't actually see conflict. You don't see fights going on from one side to the other. You see one side completely dominating and one side getting completely destroyed. So the Nazis were well organized, their victims were not, and so we do not include Nazi holocausts or any sort of massacre like this in a data set on civil wars. Similarly, we don't include individuals who are essentially trolls who aren't organized because you don't really have an organization of just a handful of individuals or one person like the Unabomber. That's the guy you see on your screen on the right. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, he had political goals. He had some sort of grandiose ideas about what the United States should and shouldn't be. We're not going to be including this sort of guy, these sorts of issues in a civil war. It'd be crazy to think that Ted Kaczynski, by planting a few bombs in the 90s, actually was involved in a civil war in the United States. Maybe he was in his head, but we're not going to count that as a civil war. Moving on, why do you need to have a non-state actor? Well, this should be pretty obvious. If every actor in your conflict is a state, is a country, then you're looking at an interstate war. You're not looking at an intra-state war, which is a civil war. So very obvious why we wouldn't include, for example, Russians in the trenches in World War I. That's not going to count as a civil war. That was World War I. That was being fought between states, not within a state. On the flip side of that, we need to have the government included. This is because... Civil wars have a political element in it, and politics involve governments. And so if you don't have a government, you don't have a fight over control of a government or the governmental possession of a territory that you might want to be ruling yourself. So we need to have a government involved in a particular conflict for that conflict to count as a civil war. Now, this can be problematic when there is no government. So you see the flag of Rwanda on, not the Rwanda, excuse me, the flag of Somalia on the right there. Somalia doesn't really have any government to speak of. It's a big mess, or it has been a big mess for a very long time. And so this sort of situation where there isn't really a government at all in a particular country means that you don't actually sometimes see those being counted as civil wars because really it's just competition among warlords in a region that is completely crazy and there is no sort of government involved in that territory. So we require governments and this does cause some problems with cases like Somalia, but that's what we go with. All right, why about why do we need political goals for a civil war to count as a civil war? Well, this is mainly to rule out psychopaths and financially motivated individuals, although having this ruling out of financially motivated individuals can remove things like Mexican drug wars that are going on right now in Mexico, which definitely have the military capacity to be looking like a civil war, but because the drug lords don't really have interest in politics, they just want to maximize their profit, we don't count those guys as being involved in a civil war. And obviously we want to rule out psychopaths, even if they're well-organized psychopaths, because again, it would be kind of crazy to think that Charles Manson was involved in a civil war against the United States. Lastly, we want civil wars to be sufficiently deadly. This rules out accidents like one soldier 
firing a bullet and killing another soldier on the other side. That's not really an intentional act. We don't want to rule that as a civil war. We want to rule that one out. It also rules out inactive conflicts. So it would be crazy to see that you know, this is the Korean War, or rather the Korean border that you see on the right there. It'd be crazy to think that the Korean War is still going on after 50 some odd years of there not being casualties uh, from those sides fighting each other. So we're not including this as a civil war. This can be problematic, though, if you have a sufficient death threshold being required in order to actually get to uh, civil war status. This means that if you don't know that there are deaths going on, there are a bunch of unknown battles with unknown casualties, this might make it actually difficult to code particular cases as civil wars. So that's something to look out for. And I note at the bottom here that a common measure of what makes a war a war is 1,000 battle deaths in total, with at least 100 on each side to make sure that there's actually a, at least a fair fight or a decent shot of one side winning. So 1,000 battle deaths in total and 100 on each side. So to conclude here, the too long didn't read, is that we're mainly focused when we talk about civil wars on situations where people are actually negotiating over benefits within a state. If there's no negotiation, if there's just pure fighting for the sake of fighting, we're not really talking about a civil war. We're talking about situations where there are disagreements and they are fighting to resolve those disagreements. Now, the good news here is that there is a lot of research that has been done on this sort of negotiation, where there are parties that have a disagreement, and rather than sitting down at a bargaining table and resolving that disagreement, they're choosing to have costly combat instead. And so what we're going to be looking at over the course of this over the course of this course is a lot of that research that has been done. So that wraps up this lecture on what is a civil war, which unfortunately didn't have a very good answer. Nevertheless, it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Take care.